Hi, I'm Pox. Couch Guy. You're watching the Two Smart Guys show where every week we bring you the latest tech news, mods, hacks, uh, I don't know, what else? <laughs> Fun things that sound very interesting and techy. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes it's just things that are interesting. Yeah, the last few episodes I've been showing you all the cool things that I saw down at CES in Las Vegas. Today we're talking about 3D printers. I talked about them briefly, but I want to focus on the top three 3D printing technologies at CES 2013, 14. Because it seems to be there's there's different methods to do similar things and sometimes different things because not every printer does everything you could want it to do. Right. So the number one or the the number three, I guess, technology, which is the most common one that you see everywhere, and the first one that we really saw on the scene, right, is uh, this uh, fused deposition modeling. Is that how you yeah. pronounce that? I think I I. I you know, deposition, depositation, I don't know. The point of it is, this is the this is the kind that you fill, and we'll put this very generally because it, it fits to a lot of different setups. You fill a hopper, which is a media containment device, with some sort of media, be it plastic, be it metal, be it cells from a human body, okay? That device sits on top of what is a motion head that looks like any other print head we're used to except for it works in what the z axis right 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 so instead of just going like um you know left to right and then and feeding the paper through now you have a platform where it's doing the droplets um back and forth left and right all the way around and then the platform usually like moves down yeah. or, or, or or the head moves up the head moves up yeah, yeah it, it and depends the, on the one and we've seen this for everything from 3D modeling of figurines and prototypes of devices to uh, somebody made a 3D printed weapon. Uh, they oh, made yeah. a pistol, the, I think it was. The, yeah, the gun, the liberator. Um, yeah, <laughs> and then we've also heard about this in um, medical technology as the ability to print a human part, uh, a a. a part of uh, of uh, artery systems we've heard of different things that they're working on that actually use your cells or something that you know works for you and then print out the piece you need and because of the miraculous bit of how human bodies work it works or they're working on making it work so it's, it's pretty amazing that these these 3d printers that used to be twenty thousand dollars just a couple of years ago They've got some pretty seriously good models that are already pre-built for around half a grand now. It's really interesting that you can, you know, you truly can. It's kind of like for me how there was a divide at one time where, um, sure, you come up with an idea for a device and it's not going to be right the first time. We know that. You have to make a 3D mold. So either have a choice between hand carving it or sending out to have it made and sometimes it's like you know someone carves out something and they make a depression and they make a mold from that and it's a really really difficult process and every time you want to make an adjustment to that prototype you have to start all over again this way you can prototype in the same day sometimes as your design is being changed because oh well that didn't work let's send it back through the you know the maker device and print a new one because we want to adjust something an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch here, or move something over because it didn't work, you know. Yeah, it, it's interesting. It, it is interesting, and and uh, the fact that almost I'd say half of the three D printers that I saw at CES were all Kickstarter projects. So it's, it's kind of interesting to see that you know, I, I remember seeing like on Engadget they'd be showing one like every other month. They'd be like, "Check out this new 3D printer for only so much, and it can do yeah. this much, and it has so much accuracy." Go, you know, check it out on Kickstarter. All these people were successful. They've made printers, and they're they're all doing for the most part pretty good, as far as I can tell. Yeah. Um, oh, anyways, so speaking of Kickstarter, this was one that I had been keeping my eye on. It's uh, our number two in 3D printer technology. This. Stereo lithography. Stereo lithography. Yeah, it sounds really interesting. Um, so I don't quite understand it the way you've described it. So let me see if I can describe it, and you can correct it. You've got the same kind of thing. You maybe have a rosin or some sort of plastic material, but instead of printing it, you actually shoot a laser into right. the so rosin. It's, so it's a liquid, and the laser 
uh, comes down and it, it it works as a catalyst. Yeah, to, yeah. To fixing the point where you wanted that, and that way you're actually using the light beam from the laser to create the device, which means that you get to make something that's probably super detailed because it's at the finite point of a laser pointer. Right. They were showing these little tiny like thimble sized things with a great amount of detail like little tiny yodas and stuff so but they're also because they're so finite they're super detailed but they're more fragile yeah the uh, i don't know if it depends on the type of the resin that you're using but it yeah they were a little they're almost kind of squishy whereas I wonder whether or not the abs this plastic is, from the other ones that i was feeling they were i mean they were rock solid i wonder since you know it really like is Lego, probably a detail since the detail is more important at this point, I it obviously has a, a finer detail point, which is the purpose of stereolithography versus the field deposition modeling. Um, I'm I'm curious to find out what kind of field that works in, because um, to me it sounds like oh microchips, but what's the point of having a microchip that's plastic? Yeah, and this this technology is interesting because these guys they they when they put their Kickstarter project up, uh, I think theirs was like twenty five hundred around. Which is a little bit more than the MakerBot at the time. Uh, I think their MakerBot model is about the same price now for their top of the line one. Yeah. Uh, but they were talking about how many microns it is, and it's um, I don't know if it's like five or less, but it's really tiny, or it's much much smaller than everything else out there. And uh, they were saying, you know, even just a year ago, this type of 3D printing was you know fifty hundred thousand dollars. And yeah. they they got it out there, and they have a real product shipping it just like a year later at CES. So it's pretty impressive. And then just just a couple of months ago, I remember seeing another project on Kickstarter, a guy doing the same exact method. You buy the the resin, but he has a kit for a hundred bucks. <laughs> really? And it uses the audio port from like your cell phone or your computer, and you your three D model is generated in a wave file. And it's hooked up like a an IV drip, and it drips in the resin. And um, I can't remember. He built it with a a laser from like a a CD burner, <laughs> hmm. and it vibrates at just the right amount. Um, and I think he even had like a lens in there, but it vibrates at just a certain. So you basically play back a file and it prints. Really? It was, just, it was amazing. It was like wow. That, it, I'll have to find some of the video and put it in here. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's an interesting technology and they just keep coming down in price and people are getting more creative about ways of, sh- uh, u- using parts that are just from other devices to make them. Mm. It's, it's, it's cool. <laughs> and number three technology, um, that I, no, it may not be the best technology, but it was very interesting is there was a group there from another country that had 3D color printing. So before... You, you just you're limited to whatever material you put in there. This printed out a full color model with paper. Mm. <laughs> it's such an interesting like the way you describe it. I don't see a big as use for it as I would be for like fuel deposition. So let me see if I can explain this one. This is a subtractive process versus an addition addition additive additive, it's, additive process. Uh, so you it, subtract it does a little the bit paper of you don't need. Yeah. So it, it and then stack it on top of each other. Yeah, it takes a sheet of paper. It prints around the edges that are going to show. So the the part that's on the edge of the model is going to be printed on. So it'll be in the whatever colors it needs to be, and it stacks it onto the last sheet and it cuts it. Yeah. And it scores it basically, and then they just keep doing that over and over and over and over and over again, and then they brush away all the um, everything that's been cut, and then you have a full color. 3D model in paper, and I don't know if they they lay down a glue or something to hold it together, or if it's just sitting there stacked, or if you put something on it afterwards. But they had like a face in a cabinet, and it was creepy because it looked like a real face in a cabinet. Really? <laughs> you can see it in the video here. It's it's a very interesting way of doing it, but I just I imagine it. You know, just the way that it's done, there would be a lot of limits in terms of like. You can see these other 3D models where they have holes and grids and chains yeah. and working gears. It, it wouldn't work at this. <laughs> well, and what I wonder about is this seems to be like if you want to do a large-scale model, um, 
if you just were like, say, like I was telling you, you know, with a car or something like that, and you just want to kind of get a concept set up and done, it's sometimes easier to work at a subtractive process where you can just kind of a reverse CNC in a way where you're adding material on top of it um, versus trying to add, uh, you know, put a liquid medium on there. You're just cutting out solid medium away. Um, I don't know. I can see uses for it in different ways. Uh, I'm not sure if any of them actually have a realistic viewpoint, but I think on a large scale, this could work. But I don't know it would justify a small, you know, version of it. I, I want to get one. I'm just... I'm not sure when the right point to jump in is because you can get. I want to know what your use, what your use is going to be. Because sorry, that was a <laughs> spontaneous yawn. Because the print use, your own Legos, because it'll be way cheaper. <laughs> maybe, maybe it won't be way cheaper. <laughs> it's like uh, it depends. It, this is one thing if you if you're searching for them, especially if you're going to the the fuse deposition modeling. Look at where you're buying them. This is one of the guys um, that was selling the the spool of, of ABS plastic yeah. that goes into them. Uh, what they call it something, I can't, off the top of my head, I can't remember now. But uh, he said, make sure when you buy your 3D printer that it's not locked to the material from the manufacturer. Because some of these newer cheap ones that are going to come out for 500 bucks or so, they're going to require a cartridge like an ink jet printer oh, okay. and you'll have to buy their $70 spool versus the $20 spool that you can buy you know just generically elsewhere Somewhere else yeah so or a refillable spool that you could get exactly gotcha. so it, it'll be you know, that whole market's going to come up again and be like you have to buy our cartridge and <laughs> yeah it's going to be the classic HP model yeah HP ruined for everybody yeah, they'll yeah they'll give you the printer for thirty bucks, but they'll charge you forty dollars for the ink for it. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, so those are the top three three D printers from CES twenty fourteen. Um, let us know what you think. What kind of uses you can see coming into with the MakerBot three D printing? Um, we think it makes interesting prototypes and just some fun things to play with. I don't know that I could justify using it because it would be fun, but it would be kind of one of those novelty items I use three or four times in a month and then stop using it. Like I want to make a, I want to make a case for my Raspberry Pi. I want to make a poxy box instead of a boxy box, or uh, you know, <laughs> I want to make um, a little housing for a little car computer or just like little, little things, little projects. I think. Yeah. That's that's what I want it for. Or I, uh, we want to know what you want to use it for. If you, you know, if you had a chance at one, and what is the limit that you would be willing to pay? Yeah. Like, is five hundred bucks too much? Is five hundred bucks not enough? Would you be more liking to pay two thousand dollars for one just to make sure you get a good one? Yeah. So it, let us know in the comments below, and uh, always ask. Which always ones do you think subscribe. are the best? The MakerBot, the Solid Doodle, the Cube, the blah blah blah, yeah. the Form One, all these different. Like I said, there was dozens of them there. So, so that's our top three. All right, see you guys next week. This has been a Two Smart Guys production.